scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Okay, so prayer is a platform for obtaining requests and granting petitions. Petitions and requests are granted through the medium of prayer. If you do not pray, there is no basis for obtaining requests. What things soever ye desire, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, it says, when ye pray. So it is at the place of prayer we receive. Notice here, he uses two words, receive and have. You only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you cannot have it. Receiving is a spiritual thing. Having is the manifestation. We only have what we have received by faith. Are we together now? What things soever ye desire. Apostle, I'm trusting God for a great year. I'm trusting God to lift my children. You can receive answers in the place of prayer. Someone say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. One more time. Say I obtain grace to pray. You must fight prayerlessness like you fight Satan. You must obtain grace to wake up and pray. Wake up and pray. Wake up and pray. Pray as a couple. Pray as a business. Don't say we are not into this spiritual thing. Better be spiritual. Pray. Hallelujah. Wake up and pray because God is in the business of rewarding and lifting people and Satan is determined like never before to bring others down. You can exempt yourself through prayer. Shout amen, please. The second force that is responsible for spiritual progress in this kingdom is the ministry of the word. The ministry of the word. Number one was the ministry of prayer. The ministry of the word. Acts chapter 20, please, and verse 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. Acts 20. 32 and now brethren he says I commend you to God and to the word of his grace I'm hearing God is speaking about someone and he's saying he's averting death from the family this is, this is yes of course I know everybody but as I just mentioned that scripture I just saw a coffin and I had it in my spirit I don't know who I'm speaking to but anything that has vowed that your family maybe your loved ones maybe someone is sick in the hospital in the name of Jesus here at this conference I stand in partnership with the graces that are in this house and I declare that you are escaped from death your loved ones are escaped from death in the name of Jesus Christ Hear me, the sound of mourning will not be heard in your house. Listen up. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace. Watch the assignment of the word. Number one, it is able to build you up. Number two, it is able to give you an inheritance among them. Not among everyone, among them that are sanctified. I commend you to God. I commend you to the word. It is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them 
that are sanctified this is very very powerful second timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 second timothy 3 15 second timothy 3 15 timothy second timothy 3 15 very powerful scripture and that from a child so when did you start that word project from a child thou has known the holy scripture it says which are able to make you wise we don't just become wise we are made wise by the word when you say someone is wise i'm not talking about sophia the world's wisdom superior wisdom that comes from above we don't just have it we are given by the word when you interact with the word you access supernatural divine wisdom and the bible says wisdom is connected to mighty works in fact it says wisdom is justified by her children the presence of wisdom is validated by the results that follow don't say i am wise if your life is barren of results are we together it can make you wise unto salvation it can make you wise the bible contains the wisest perspective god's thoughts his modus operandi as far as any and all matters that pertain to life and godliness is concerned when you ignore the word of god you may have heard me teach it but let me just say it here that essentially the bible contains three things number one promises you may want to write number two principles you may also want to write that number three prophecies so every time you open the bible you are interacting with three dimensions of realities number one promises god's commitment to you number two principles the modus operandi of the kingdom how god operates number three prophecies a compass that guides you into a meaningful life in the midst of all that happens in society we are not surprised today because the bible is a prophetic book it already told us darkness shall cover the earth any believer that is grounded in the world should not be surprised being shocked and surprised is proof that you have not accessed the wisdom that comes with the word did the bible not say perilous times shall come did the bible not say nation will rise against nation kingdom against kingdom those are not principles that is the prophetic operation of the word but you can find the promises deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass for instance it says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that these blessings all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you it says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you promises there are conditions tied to them then there are principles the bible tells us through parables that the kingdom operates this way and it will use a story to illustrate a biblical principle for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth it's not a promise that is a principle When you reject the word of God, you have rejected access to superior wisdom. When you reject the word of God, you have rejected access to superior wisdom. And the Bible speaking about wisdom, it says, By me kings reign and princes decree justice. It said, With me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness, that those that seek me early will find me. There is timing to wisdom. You must seek it early. Is someone learning now this is the year that you must obtain grace go and get pastors materials and settle down don't say I was there when they preached it faith comes by two kinds of hearing the hearing that gives you information and the hearing that gives you understanding it comes by hearing and hearing awareness and comprehension just because you are aware that that subject matter was discussed does not mean you have received Is someone learning now? Yes. You know, most believers are careless about the word and they do not know. Please look at me. Ah. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along? 
eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter please do not allow the devil deceive you that the word of god is a is is a necessary luggage that you have to carry contained here are stories of people who have gotten what you are looking for is it prosperity you will find it here is it the lifting power the bible here written here was a shepherd who became a king written here was a prisoner who became a prime minister how high do you want to rise that the word of god does not have something to tell you written here are dead people who came back to life the bible archives their testimonies in the book of hebrews 11 it says for by faith the elders obtained a good report then you begin to read through faith this happened this one happened it says the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope apostle right now my health is failing go and read the book of job and i will show you a man health failed and it was a global news and yet he still came back apostle you don't know how much i've lost still read the book of job and see a man who was the richest in the east and everything plus his children died but i love chapter 42 and verse 10 of job it says and god restored job when he prayed for his friends that he had twice the things that he lost everyone who rejected him suddenly started coming and the bible says everyone brought him a piece of money apostle people misunderstand me in my office go and ask joseph and his trouble with potiphar's wife good people can go to prison too but they only go to prison to end up in the throne the prison is where good and bad people meet together just like the cross but I can tell you, sincere people don't remain in the prison. The same way sincere people do not hang there and remain there. For as long as you think the Bible is such a dull book that does not have anything to tell you in our contemporary world, you have fallen into the trap of Satan. How about people who became so wealthy and forgot God and misused the money? Go to the book of Ecclesiastes and watch the repentance of a fallen man. One who had everything you can ever imagine. The preacher wrote confessing that everything my eyes desired I had. Do you know what level of loss that is? That you don't have anything your eyes saw, you carried. And instead of reading many books, there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul. Hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God, he says, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Show me the level of wisdom you have by the depth of the word that you have put in your spirit. Don't show me by your age. That's a risk. Don't show me by where you travel to or didn't travel to. That is a risk. I only call you wise to the degree to which I see the word of God resident within you. The wisdom that comes with age is profitable but very limiting in the light of current realities. The wisdom that comes through academics is very useful but you have seen experts to their knees. The things that are happening in the world today have caused people to rethink their concept of intelligence. But there is wisdom that comes from above and that comes by the word for someone god is telling you don't allow the devil keep deceiving you you may not have a job but you have a bible start there use the time and start there father open thou my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of your word and you will find where it was written concerning you the bible says in luke chapter 4 that jesus came and the scroll of isaiah was given to him and he found where it was written concerning him there is something written concerning you but you must find it when he found it he said this day is this fulfilled in your eyes say in the name of jesus I obtain grace to be serious with the word five minutes one verse that may be for a baby Christian but the challenges that that are looking for you they require 
a plethora of scriptural wisdom to deal with. You cannot afford to freelance your Bible study life. You just pick one verse and say, can you send me any verse to comfort me now? You need to be serious. You need to obtain grace. I'm, 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 it's my charge with every sense. Of, I'm, I'm not the reading type. I don't really like the Bible like that. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, when a patient is sick and they tell him, swallow this one, three, three hours or six, six hours, whether you like it or not, the doctor is not there to see all your tantrums. You have to make up your mind. It's either I want to be well. Is that true? He says they are life to those who find them. They are not just good news. They are life. When the Bible says something, he said, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying, it says. Do not let it depart from your mouth. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Then it says they are life, not to everybody, to those who find them and health to their flesh. Your security is based on your knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Fear and loving God today and doubting unnecessarily tomorrow is because the word is not settled in you. I tell you if you make this year the year that you sit with the word. Some of you need to go and look for a bookstore, buy a Bible, buy a material or whatever, whether electronically or what. Just settle down and say Father, I, I obtain grace. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon my mind. I'm tired of swinging like a pendulum from pillar to post. Based on the things that happen around me, I contend for stability and that's by the word jesus himself knew what to do may you know what to do this year please shout amen again don't be the kind of person that celebrates a message on sunday preach preach and you are not listening by monday you don't even know what to do when you stand before situations and circumstances scriptures like arrows should come out of you and they are like weapons you know what to do when someone says over my dead body for you to rise in this office you don't have to argue and start shouting you know what to do there is a mystery you surround yourself with mysteries like chariots you know what to do it's like calling your pastor a woman and he begins to cry is that not an issue of a disturbing issue there is a depth of revelation that has translated to trust that settles within you that you know I'm a man not a woman so if someone says I think you're a woman that's, 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 thank God bless your your perception and I pray there will be enough doctors who help you when it becomes but as for you you are settled that's the same way when someone says you're a failure you don't just speak unbelief no no I'm not a... I already know There is a speaking that is out of fear, but there is a settled reality. This is not pride. Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. He was not lying. Are we learning? The ministry of the word. Please, if you, if you don't get anything among the things that I share today, leave this place with a renewed passion to stay with the word. Make it a project. It takes discipline. Concentration is not a gift. You have to settle down and make up your mind. Sleep, hold on, I'm studying. You will enjoy me when I sort some things in my life, but for now you need to stay. Don't join people who, the Bible says on the seventh day God rested. You are resting on the second day. We only rest on the second, on the seventh day. Many people are resting on the first day. Resting on the second day. A CEO that has labored for years is now resting. You who just graduated, you are also resting. No sir. Let's learn from scripture. We rest on the seventh day. You're just starting ministry no influence nobody knows you we are not even sure whether you are saved or not and you are resting i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he says for the night cometh when no man can walk again are we together the bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat you find that in scripture then you go and apply it seven o'clock you get up and you open your business say why are you doing i'm just starting 
it takes diligence to establish credibility someone can be sleeping and people will call him because of a relationship that has been built for 10 years you are just starting don't lie down and expect somebody to call you i hope we are still together please obtain grace to stay with the word obtain grace this running from pillar to post minimize it this year and settle down let's come and knock the door of your house and say look i'm studying not because i have a sermon to preach because i have a destiny to fulfill there is a mandate upon my life and i will not fail lord open my eyes and you are studying and light from heaven enters you and like someone who is drunk you begin to rejoice it says i found your word and i did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to me I sense in my spirit that David's Christian Center will record phenomenal testimonies this year. That, listen, there, there are supposedly, for want of word, ordinary people, pastor, who as at this conference may be sitting quietly, but by March, when they come to stand here, they say, my life is a testimony that the word produces. Listen, carry beans or maize seed and keep it on top of your table it does not grow because although it is seed there is something you must do with it are we together now yes many people have gotten precious seeds wonderful seeds but we are not engaging it the ministry of the word number three so that we'll wrap up I believe someone's spirit is being fired up this night and let me just say this beware of people who don't even know they are being used by the devil who wait just where you have made a commitment to be spiritual here they come in the name of friendship and brotherly kindness they come and deflate your fire they may not be bad people listen listen they may not be bad people but if you are carrying Isaac to the place of sacrifice, there are good people you have to say, wait at the base here. This height we are climbing, I have to go alone. Being alone and being lonely are two different things. You must sustain the courage to move the direction of your destiny, even if it means editing people. Because there are many people who just when they make commitments for God, somebody just comes and says, you know what, uh, you are studying, can't you shift it? I think there's something, there's one movie. With... It's a movie, you can watch it again. I don't know about you, but this is the secret to this life you are seeing. The word of God took me literally. Anybody who ignores the word, you are trying to turn God into a magician. Be ready for surprises. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. Obtain grace to engage. Listen, especially over the areas that are not working in your life. Take inventory of the areas that are working and thank God for it. Then gain greater knowledge. But sample the areas that are not working. I'm healthy, I'm doing well, I'm enjoying a nice relationship with my wife and children, but this finance thing, now it's time to take it as a project. And settle down. The Bible says, through wisdom, Proverbs 18 and verse 1, a man, having separated himself, that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Lord, why am I like this? Why is it I, that I am a sincere person but I never have good people come around me? There is something you don't know about relationships. Go to the word. It says, he that wants friends must first show himself friendly. There may be something you are not doing. You have not seen the value of men and the value in men. Oh, this is the mistake I've been making. I've been destroying good relationships sincerely because I do not know that relationships are investments and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Go and listen to Pastor Mildred's teaching that she did this, this and that. And you now listen. In two weeks, you have become a new version of you. By March, God would have brought strategic people to your life. And people wonder and say, what did you do that this person just gave you a car? You didn't do anything. Is that true? Is it true that you didn't do anything? You've heard me say favor is merited. 
The favor is dimensional. It is only one dimension of favor that is unmerited. Proverbs 13, 15. Good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. If someone comes to give Pastor Mildred right now or her dear husband a, 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 a plot of land or a house or a car, it's easy to think that, oh, because they are great men of God. You find out what was done first. nothing just happens you know that so it's time to make your own happen in the name of Jesus the force of the word this year settle down what is not working in my life Lord grant me grace I believe I married a good man but we are tired of hitting our heads from pillar to post Lord there has to be an answer and the Spirit of God takes you to scripture it may take a while but let that while meet you studying not complaining let that while meet you studying lord i've been in lagos for 10 years and i've not gotten a job someone just came to david's christian center in two weeks and he got a job what am i doing wrong this is not jealousy or competition this is is you are you are provoking yourself to godliness let me tell you until you get angry with some things and get dissatisfied they will never leave you Dissatisfaction is a gift. It can push you to a new level. For some of you, you have experienced dimensions of God spiritually, financially, but you are camping around mediocrity. Shake that local champion mentality and trust God to push you. The world is your stage. Stop celebrating success too early. I'm better than this and that. Compared to what? Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, he said this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and facing the things that are before me, he said I press. Find out who is pressing. The man who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Make up your mind that this is not the time to start celebrating success too early. Pat yourself at the back, Lord I thank you for this. But there are heights. And we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you in ministry in business and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you sing it one more time provoke yourself and we We'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Apostle, but I'm a mighty prophet compared to what? Have you turned Nigeria's problem overnight? What prophets in the Bible who said by this time tomorrow? Thank God for what you have seen, but you are still at the infancy. I am a great teacher compared to what? Paul, who spoke before. Agrippa before Felix and he said you almost converted me as hardened as they were let me tell you this the spirit of a champion is the spirit of a presser you never settle let those behind you keep clapping for you while you keep shifting and moving I made a covenant with myself that I would never allow the applause of men to close the doors of new levels for me Lord thank you for what you are doing but there is more compared to where you are taking us we are just a step out of the cave keep us humble that's why pride is a killer if you are here and you are suffering from the spirit of pride repent this night and go for a retreat after this conference people brag over nothing just little results I am amazed at the passion of your pastor and their wife in spite of the phenomenal work they are doing across the body, blessing people with their thoughts and on family life especially, and yet you keep seeing them press. I was having a discussion with your pastor yesterday and I was very humbled by his passion just listening and I said, this is the spirit of a winner. Can I tell you, when you say they are clapping for me, look at those clapping first. Before you say I'm a champion, look at those clapping. Who are the people clapping? Am I challenging you? Obtain grace. Man of God, go back to the drawing board. Thank you for what you have done, but there is more. Prophetess, prophet, there is still more. Businessman, you've not conquered Lagos yet. 
thank God that you have started but come on have you been able to give and fund a conference without it affecting your finances if the answer is no you are not yet there thank God for what you have done but keep pressing number three we have to close <laughs> Shalikari Sapano Sebreketis Yata. Pray in the spirit for one minute, please. Prandaga Sobreketis Calibra Haskadiata. Alabarato Sabretike Belegos Yata. Hallelujah. Number three, very quickly, we're wrapping up now. The third spiritual force that is responsible for helping believers to make spiritual progress is called discipleship. Please write it down. Every apostle was once a disciple. The word apostle there should not be limited to preacher. It just means once who is sent. That means without training, your being sent is only a risk to your destiny. There are many believers who will never submit themselves to be structurally mentored. You see, a disciple is simply a student and a learner. Please look up. I love you with all my heart and I'm standing to share the burden of your pastors this year. Graduate from being a member to being a student. I always say it when I'm speaking, you know, I, I tell our people, fans don't have any inheritance. I am a fan of this. That's wonderful. I believe they are well-intentioned. But the only people who receive are those who are students. It is from the word disciple that you coin the word discipline, the staying power, the resolve to remain until you become. Jesus called them to be with him first before he would send them. There is no champion who just goes to the ring. You first stay with a coach. Many believers fail in life because they are not structurally mentored. They freelance knowledge here and there. The assignment of the local assembly, the assignment of Pastor Kingsley, Pastor Mildred, according to Jeremiah 3.15, he says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and that they will feed you. Huh? They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So your pastors are like spiritual chefs. They feed you week in, week out. That means every spirit that fights you from coming to church and then to settle down. Don't come to church and be browsing and be smiling and be doing all of these ones. I mean, you know, if you are smiling for joy but that you are distracted, you are in your own world by yourself while fire is coming from the altar. No. If you are too big to be discipled, then the throne is not for you. I assure you on that. Many people have made a shipwreck of their lives and their destinies through pride. They will not settle to listen. Jesus, surprisingly, even though he was the word incarnate at age 12, when his contemporaries would probably be running up and down, the Bible says Jesus was at the temple learning under the scribes. The law that he was coming to abolish, he still submitted himself to that system. And for 18 years, we don't hear about Jesus again. The next time we hear about him, he's age 30. And John speaks and says, behold the lamb. Jesus did not just succeed because he was the son of God. He submitted to learning. For someone, God is telling you you are destined for the throne, but not this version of you. You need to settle in church. You need to be properly mentored. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says they continued steadfastly. Acts 2.42, you read it down to 47. Acts 2.42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Is that in your Bible? And in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. The next verse, as a result, the Bible says, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders were done by the apostles. Let's go to Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 very quickly the bible says paul haven't passed through the upper coast that he came and he found certain disciples acts 19 from verse 1 it's just 1 to 4 but let's just look at verse 1 he found certain disciples 
not certain members they were saved but they were disciples now notice the person who discipled them was limited himself so they were taught after the limitation of that disciple they were saved but they were not filled with the holy spirit yet only god knows what more you need to learn thank god for what you know but what more you need to learn and paul asked them he said have you received the holy ghost since you believe verse 2 and they said we've not even heard if there be any holy ghost paul was surprised wow unto what baptism then were you baptized he asked them and they said the baptism of john they were discipled but limited that's the reason why you should salute your your pastors for being fast to be open to receive the diversities that are in the body of christ because they do not want this to become your state and paul now began to explain to them that the baptism of john was the baptism of repentance right that they should believe on who should come and when he had now spoken to them the bible says that they were baptized in the name of jesus and he laid hands on them and they were filled with the holy ghost and they spoke in tongues they prophesied and the bible says the number of them was 12 12 of them make up your mind that this is not the year you will give excuses for coming to church as a matured believer if you have to be coerced to come to the house of god i sincerely respectfully believe you are not serious hallelujah i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord and when you come to church from the opening prayer to the grace you are attentive lord what do you have for me today my children are the mercy of this revelation that is coming and as the word is coming you are attentive the bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something discipleship submit yourself to learning buy books submit yourself to knowledge and that also extends to people in business find someone who is clearly ahead of you and unashamedly submit to learn find someone who is clearly if you are not sure don't go there you need that gap that potential difference has to be there for you to receive colleague mentality is why every, many people remain grounded i'm not sure if i should receive this or not but when the difference is clear in results you will listen attentively learn from all men but find those with potent results and follow the bible calls them the them who through faith and patience have obtained the results have obtained the promises apostle i'm doing business but it looks like this my business is not working well in lagos there has to be somebody born again and filled with the holy spirit in that area submit yourself to learning there is something i do not know it is amazing how humility can buy you something in one day that may take many people 10 years the person may not tell you the answer you are looking for he will only say sit down let me give you a story my journey started from 1971 that's your revelation there it's your responsibility to fish out the one he is telling you stories they kept me under a bridge and i remember that night i cried unto the lord i said mercy uh-huh you are learning now you are writing all the keys you see let me tell you something masters are so professional sometimes when you watch them you don't see the steps you will have to trust god for grace okay this is what this person has said and then you go and do likewise and you come back with results that looks like you held a charm there is no result that cannot be reproduced if jesus's result was reproduced there is no result that cannot be reproduced it is either ignorance or pride may you reproduce fearful results in the name of jesus the son of the living god hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed 
who will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.